is part 45 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss customizing the display and edit templated helpers in MVC. Please watch part 44 before proceeding. In part 44, we discussed the built-in display and edit templated helpers. We'll be using the same example that we worked with in part 44. Notice that at the moment when we navigate to this edit action within home controller and then when we pass this employee ID 1, we are providing an editing interface to edit that employee details. Notice this higher date property. This property is of type date time. So by default ASP.NET MVC is going to use the built-in date time editor template to provide an editing interface for this property value. So by default, this built-in datetime editor template is simply going to render a text box control as the editing interface for that datetime value. And the end user has to type the date into the text box literally. But remember, anytime you have a requirement in your project to capture dates from the end user, it's always recommended to display a calendar instead of asking the user to type the date into the text box by hand. Okay, for example, you know, as soon as I click on this higher date text box, we want a calendar to drop down. And as soon as I select a date from the calendar, the selected date should be populated within the text box control and the calendar should immediately disappear. This would avoid any confusions as far as date formats are concerned. Because if you ask the user to type the date into the text box control, different users may type it in different formats. For example, some users may type it in DDMMYYY, other users may type it in MMDDYYY. So to avoid all this confusion, you know, it's recommended to display a calendar. And for this purpose, we are going to make use of jQuery calendar. So we are going to customize the date time editor template. But before we do that, let's understand the conventions used by MVC to find these customized templates. And keep in mind, we can customize both the display templates and editor templates. The customized display templates must live in a special subfolder that is named as display templates. And similarly, editor templates must live in a special subfolder that named as editor templates. And these special subfolders can then live either in shared folder or in a specific views folder. So within our MVC demo project, we have the shared folder. So if these display templates and editor templates live within the shared folder, then those templates will be available for all the views within the entire project. On the other hand, if these folders are present only you know, within this home views folder, then those templates will be available only for the views within that home folder. And another important thing to keep in mind is that the name of the template must match the name of the type. In this example, we are going to customize the date time template. So the name of the template in this case has to be datetime.ascx. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So let's add a folder to our shared folder. And I'm going to name this editor templates. And then I'm going to add a view to this folder. And let's name it date time. The name is this name is very important because we are going to customize the date time editor template and this is going to add date time dot a uh, CS HTML partial view I'm going to re get rid of the code that's auto generated and then we need to specify the model for this partial view the model is going to be date time because that's what is the template that we are customizing and then we're going to make use of nullable date time because if you remember this higher date property can have a null value within the database. So it's a nullable date time. So the model for view for our view is going to be nullable date time. And then to display the date, we need a text box control. So to get the text box control, we are going to make use of text box HTML helper. And this helper method needs three parameters, the name of the text box, the value, and the HTML attributes. So the name is going to be an empty string. And where is the value going to come from? The value is going to come from the model object, and the model is a nullable date time. So it's very important that we check if the value within the model um, is there or not. And how do we do that? Using a property called has value. Okay, so this is a Boolean property which is going to return true or false. If there is a value, it's going to return true, in which case we want to retrieve the value and then convert that to a string. And while we are converting it to the string, we can also represent the date format string, whether you want it in uh, DDMMYYY or MMDDYYY. So you can specify that format there. So I basically want it in DD slash MM slash YYYY. 
and you may be wondering why did I specify capital letter M for months that's because if you specify small letter M you know in a date time format string small letter M's are considered for minutes if you want uh, months you specify capital letter M and if you specify two let two capital letter M's if it is the first month instead of displaying just one it will display zero one okay similarly if you you know specify two D's uh, for date it's going to display zero one for the first month okay not one uh, similarly if you want the name of the day specify four D's now these date format strings are actually available at this Microsoft link. I'll have this link available on my blog just in case if you need to refer to that. And notice, you know, look at this. If I specify, you know, one, two capital letter M's, you know, if it is a sixth month, I'll have zero six. If I let, specify only one capital letter M, the month is, you know, if it's a sixth month, it's not going to have a preceding zero. If you want the full month name, then you specify four capital letter M's. Uh, M's like that okay so I'll have this link available on my blog in case if you need that alright so if the model has got a value we are converting uh, it to the date string to be in that format else we are simply going to have an empty string within the text box so that is the second property I mean parameter that we need to specify for this text box control and the third parameter is the HTML attributes okay so I need to set one HTML attribute which is nothing but the class for the text box. In a bit you will see how we are going to make use of that class. And to set the HTML attributes we can set them as using an anonymous type. So new and we need to set the class for the text box control, I mean the CSS class. And to do that we type class but then keep in mind class is a C sharp reserved keyword and if you want to use that as an attribute name then you need to precede that with an add symbol okay so the class is going to be date you can give it any meaningful name I'm just giving it date okay so that's all the modification that is required for this date time partial view so this is going to act as our uh, you know customized date time editor template and then the next thing is uh, modification is for our edit view itself so now look at this we're gonna make use of jQuery calendar so if we need the jQuery calendar then we need to refer to some jQuery scripts and CSS files okay but then if you look at our MVC application we neither have scripts folder nor you know the CSS contents folder within this project okay now if you actually create a new MVC4 project look at this to create a new MVC4 project in Visual Studio so you go to file new project and then you select ASP.NET MVC4 web application you give it a name and then once you click OK it is going to ask you to pick a template now when we were creating this MVC demo project we picked the template as empty project and that's the reason why we don't have any contents and script folders within that okay but then if you select internet application as the template as the project template and click OK then it is going to create a project like this for you and it's going to have the content folder which is going to contain all the required uh, jQuery CSS files and similarly it's going to have the scripts folder which is going to have all the required jQuery scripts okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this project which I have created in that way and then I'm going to open that in Windows Explorer and then copy the content and script folders so copy them and then I'm going to go back to our MVC demo project right click on the project name and I'm going to paste them there so this should copy over both the contents and scripts and then we need two script files so one is the jQuery script file itself and I'm going to take the minified version we'll talk about the minified difference between minified jQuery and the normal jQuery in a later video session but for now we are simply going to take the minified jQuery JavaScript um, reference and then jQuery UI again the minified version so these are the two JavaScript files that are required I mean uh, jQuery script files and then the next thing is the CSS files okay because the calendar if you want the calendar to have these styles you need to refer to the CSS files so which are the two CSS files I need the site.css file within the content folder 
and then the other CSS file is within themes within base it's jQuery UI all CSS so let me drag and drop so we have now all the required script and CSS files the final thing now is to actually attach or invoke date picker function on this text box control. So as soon as I move my mouse, you know, I click into this uh, higher date text box, we want a calendar. So we need to call that date picker function, you know, you know, on this text box control. And to do that, we have to write some JavaScript, I mean jQuery script. So we are going to use script tag here, script type is equal to text slash JavaScript. And to write JavaScript, you know, the first character we use is dollar. So we're going to write a function here. And what I'm going to do is, if you remember, in our date time editor template, notice that we have set a CSS class of date. Okay, so the class for this text box is going to be date and look at this we are using HTML helper text box so what is this going to do this is going to generate an input type of text so an input control of type text and the CSS class is going to be uh, date so I'm going to select this control and invoke date picker function on that control and how are we going to do that using jQuery so to find that text box control what am I going to do I'm going to find all the input controls of type text and which has got a class, a CSS class of date. So this, you know, jQuery selector should find this text box control on the form. And on that, let's go ahead and invoke date picker function. Okay, and to this date picker function, we, we need to specify the date format as well. So what is the date format that we want? As soon as we select a date within the calendar, you know, that gets populated within the text box. So in which format do you want that to be um, selected within the text box, whether it's in DDYY, I mean MMYY or MMDDYYY. So you can specify that format. So for jQuery, to specify the date format, I'm going to use the string date format and then within double quotes you specify the format ddmm slash yy okay so those are all the changes required now let's build our solution and let's go back to our view and refresh this now let's actually cancel that and let's refresh this so now the styles of this page should also change because we are referring to CSS files so it's going to change the styles of all the controls and look at that we have a semicolon next to higher date that's possibly because within date time.cshtml we have a semicolon there we know we don't need that so let's get rid of that save it and let's refresh that so now we shouldn't have that semicolon anymore now when I click that look at that I get the calendar okay now look at that it is 2nd of November 2007 okay so I have the date there already selected now if I select for example um, 11th November look at that 11th November 2007 so I have the date okay now we have a calendar instead of asking the user to literally type the date into the uh, text box control all right On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C-Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.